I want you to get this very clear and I want you to understand this. The faith that you have in God will change your entire life completely. When you trust in God, in the roughest of time, God will turn things around. I'm going to show you. There are those two characters in the Bible where we see where these two persons, they moved by faith and God did great things on their behalf. There are two elements that I want you to add to your faith that will move God to act accordingly in your life. See, the reason why certain things is not happening in your life and certain certain things seems stagnant in your life it all has to do with your faith in god believe it or not it is your faith the bible says that will move mountains it simply means that if there is anything in your life that is hard to be achieved it is always inch on your faith in god don't be fooled and don't be tricked and don't be overturned by the enemy don't be blind by the works of the enemy Abraham knew that that's why Abraham followed God by faith there's another realm of blessing there's another realm of grace that you need to tap into and it and it is within you that faith is within you and you are the one who's left to act to activate that faith within you so that God can move on your behalf I want you to listen to this it is very important the first point that I want to bring to you is obedience when you are obedient to the voice of God, it moves God to act by faith in your life. In other words, when you are obedient to the voice of God, to the words of God, it is an act of faith. It is an act showing God. It's a demonstration showing God that you heard his voice and that you're going accordingly to his voice and to go where he says you must go speak what he say you must speak do what he say you must do it is an act to say god i heard what you're saying and i'm doing what you're saying in my life listen to me the moment you begin to apply obedience to your faith to the voice of god then your faith god will see that faith and move accordingly and bless you in return with his with his unfathomable grace and mercy remember the bible says that it is by faith abram left from his father's house and obeyed god and followed him all the way through obedience to the voice of god is very very important look what hebrews 11 says right Look what Hebrews 11 verse 8 says. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and he went out not knowing whether he went. If God speak to you and say, go and give that brother something. Go and talk to that sister about X and Y. God give you a specific instruction about something. God tell you to leave that place. Don't go to that place. And you listen to his voice. God speaks through people also, yes. And he speaks through his word. And he also comes directly. So God can speak to you through somebody. A word of wisdom. And so what I'm saying to you is that when God speak to you and you act accordingly, and you're moving obedience like what Abraham did. He will work on your behalf in a magnificent, faithful way, just as oh, he has seen your faithful obedience to him. Your obedience to God, listen this, is an act of faith. Your obedience to the word of God and to what God is doing in your life is an act of faith. Don't be, don't be blinded by the works of God anytime listen this anytime God sees an act of faith in your life God is gonna bless you indeed there's nowhere in the scripture where the, the apostles the the, 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 the the disciples the mighty men of faith did an act of faith and God don't bless them in return be obedient to the voice of God and God will lead you into a path that you've never seen and bless you like you've never been blessed before. 
Did you remember that Saul wasn't obedient to the voice of God and what happened to him? The Bible said that obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better some, than some things that you think you're doing that will please God. When you display that spirit of obedience, God will move. It's like that is an it's like that is a that is a that is an asphalt. That you're saying, God, move on my behalf now. That's it's like an open door. You're saying, God, enter now. The next thing that I want to bring to your attention is do your best and give your best to God. That's an act of faith also. Listen to me. I said, do your best at work. Do your best at church. Give God your best prayer. Give God your best worship. Give God your best fasting. Give God your best tithe. That's an act of faith. The moment you, you, you give God your best and the first of what you have, God will bless you indeed because he will see it as a as a he will see it as an offering. Look to me, listen to me. Your service at work, your service at church, whether you teach Sunday school, you do evangelism, whether you minister every now and then at the pulpit, whether you pray for people, right? Whether you clean the church, your service that you do, it is an offering to God. Get real with me. It is an offering to God and you have to look at it as an opportunity that God is going to bless you indeed if you remain faithful to him. And you give him your best at work, your best at church, your best prayers, your best worship. You give him your time. The best of your time, the most of your time. That's an act of sacrifice. Are you getting to me? Are you listening to me? Did you know that your sacrifice can be mixed with doing what is evil? Or your sacrifice can be considered evil, not pleasing to God when you offer it up? What will pollute your offering not to be pleasing to God? If your offering is not pleasing to God, then God won't move by faith. What will pollute it when you murmur at work? Remember, your service that you're offering is an offering to God. When, what will prevent your offering not to be acceptable in the sight of God? You're murmuring at church. You complain at church. What you have to do, what you don't have to do. God wants you to render to him your time, your sweat, and watch him move on your behalf. Stop the murmuring. Stop the complaining. Put some things behind you. Take out unforgiveness out of your heart and live a life of cleanness before him. This is what I said. Give God your best offering, your best tithes, your best prayers. They are all offering. When you give someone something, you know, you give someone your best, you know. Do you know who you're giving it to? God. Do you remember what Christ said? Depart from me because I know you not. Because if you had given to me when I was closeless, closeless, if you had visited me when I was in the prison, if you had given me some cold water when I needed some water to drink, if you had prayed for me when I need prayer, you see it now? The good works that you do, it reflects God, the ability of God, the glory of God every good work that you do you're not doing it only to the individual you're doing it to the glory of God and God recognized that that's what happened with Cornelius the Bible said that the good things that Cornelius did that's why I'm telling you, you know, do good it is a sacrifice when God see that sacrifice that good sacrifice comes up he's gonna bless you indeed sometime you are running one good one next job and the next job you need you just need to do good because God is gonna bless you same way Sometimes you run down money from people who know not even like you. No. Just do good to people and God will bless you in return with some good people in your life to minister to you financially. Back to Acts 10. Cornelius was a man that prayed to God. Prayer is a sacrifice. Praise is a sacrifice. Fasting is a sacrifice. Worship is a sacrifice. Reading the word of God is a sacrifice. When you do all of that, 
God sees that. Do your best. Give God your best of times and he will move by faith in your life. Don't doubt God. Give God your best and do your best. Cornelius, let's just go back to it. It's interesting because God didn't only recognize Cornelius work as a work sorry God didn't only acknowledge Cornelius prior as sacrifice but God acknowledged Cornelius work also as sacrifice yes let me see if I can find it as quick as possible God didn't only acknowledge that he acknowledged also the man's work they acknowledge the man's work as a sacrifice and that's what i'm telling you do your best at church if you are given the, the opportunity to teach sunday school in charge of sunday school to lead worship play the guitar play the piano the drum whatever the technical things whatever do your best god will see it as an offering and bless you indeed all right so there's a certain man in Casaria. So as I said guys, when you, you work also on your offering and your prayer, your work and your prayer, God accept your work and your prayer. Don't be fooled. As an offering, the good work that you do. Now, as I've said before, do not corrupt your work and your offering rather. Do not corrupt your offering by murmuring and complaining and chatting. Your pastor and your boss. Do not corrupt your offering by murmuring complaining about your pastor and about your boss but take it to God in prayer because your work and your service it is a work it is an offering going up to God the good deeds that you do if you do something good to somebody do not complain about it or talk about it tell everybody about it it is an offering to God and the moment you do that you're going to corrupt your offering I'm going to read Cornelius and then I'm going to show you that your offering can be corrupt. And you have to be very careful of it. Cornelius, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Devout man, one that feared God with all his oaths, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He gave money, food, help out people. And he always prayed to God. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel coming down to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, remember in Acts 10, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms are come up to God for a memorial. Do you see that? His good deeds, in verse 4, and his prayer, came up to God as an offering the good things that you do in life is an offering to God and God will bless you indeed and enlarge your territory when you continue to do good when God see your offering he will bless you in return next thing as I said your offering can be corrupted your good work can be corrupted by the enemy so that when you offer that work and when you do the service you realize it seems like an ass no increase no promotion no at all not come away your offering you need to check back your offering and your service where you offer because something wrong somewhere do you get what i'm saying let us look at genesis chapter four if i'm correct all right all right right now i'm gonna show you that your offering and your service that your offering can be corrupted and when it is corrupted faith is no longer part of your offering and you have to offer your service with faith and for once it's corrupted it's no longer part of it watch here and in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord and Abel he also brought of the first limbs of his flock and of the fat thereof and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering that means it was pleasing to God but unto Cain he said but unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect and Cain was very angry and he was very discouraged and the Lord said unto Cain why art thou wrath and why is thy countenance fallen if thou did well thou shall not be accepted 
That's a question. And if thou does not well, sin lieth at thine door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shall be, and thou shall rule over him. So you see it? If the offering that you offer is not acceptable to God, it is corrupted by sin. And when it's corrupted by sin, God can't move accordingly. God can't bless you indeed. God can't be pleased with your work if it's corrupted by sin. God can't be pleased with your prayer, with your lead. You lead in worship. God can't please with it because it's corrupted by sin. It's corrupted by murmuring, by complaining. You're not getting much money. You work too hard. You're the only one doing it. Yes. It's corrupted by sin, so God won't move by faith. Your works. Those are some two, two things I wanted to share with you. Be obedient to God and it will move God and give God your best offering which means your best your most of your time in prayer most of your time in reading the word give me your best prayer give me your best um, ties give me your best worship yes give him your best at work and give him your best when you're giving somebody something give them your best because that thing that you give the person it's like you're giving it unto the Lord I've drawed, I've made reference a while ago that any good thing that you do, don't think you're doing it just for the person you're giving the things to. It is all for the glory of God and God will see it and bless you. I just read it in Acts 10. The good things that Cornelius did, God said, I've seen it. It comes up to me. Remain strong. I pray for you today that God will strengthen you, will encourage your faith to do what is right and what is good and pleasing to him and that you will be obedient to his voice and that he will move by faith in your life. Hallelujah. I declare and I decree over your life that you are strong, you are mighty and you are courageous. I declare that the power of God will rest upon you and will lead you and will speak to you. I declare that the power of the Holy Ghost will overshadow you and will reveal to you the word, the wisdom, the knowledge and the understanding of God so that you will live accordingly. I ask you, Father, that this person who is listening now will receive the supernatural power to have faith in you in all things to act by faith to lead by faith to do his or her work by faith and you will bless him you will bless her by faith i declare and i decree over your life that the faithful hands of god will remain constantly pouring out in your life so that you will not have even room enough to receive it and there will be an abundance of God's overflowed blessings being manifested in your life and in your children's life. I speak that the grace of God will intricately locate you and fill you up in a supernatural way that will, that will, that will amaze you and that will lead you into a path of daily repentance when you look at his love towards you. I speak over your life the divine grace of God to direct your path Go today in God's grace and God bless you. Like this video and share it to 20 people. It will bless them indeed. God loves you. Have a great day.